Hello and welcome to Forest Tech. Today we will be creating this tape unrolling effect which can be used for a lot of different things and this tutorial packs a lot of different techniques, step by step. Now, I've also started my Patreon so if you want the project source files and suggest new tutorials then feel free to join and show your support. So if it's for your first time in Blender, have a look at this. You can use your middle mouse button to rotate around and the same wheel up and down to zoom in and out. Right click for some menu. You can move G to grab an object and move it around in a certain axis. You can press that axis, that is X, Y, Z. You can even give it a number. Same applies to rotation. If you can just press R, you can rotate it around, give it an axis and even give it an angle. Same case with the scale. You can give it an axis can give it a size. You can also press tab to go into an object and edit its vertices, faces or edges. You can press the Z key to change the solid, rendered or textured wireframe modes. So we'll start by get rid of this cube and shift A to add a curve path. Now if you press tab, you can edit these vertices. So I'm going to select A and select all these vertices and press S to scale them up. Scale them up to four. And now I'm going to just extrude this curve and rotate this over an x-axis so it's flat on the ground. I'll switch over to the material preview and switch over to shader editor. This is where we will be creating a material for this plane. I already have an image of this tape, or well, extra logo, I'm going to drag and drop that image right here and connect the color nodes to the base color. You can see the extra appearing here. I will adjust this, so press Ctrl T to open up this mapping or if you don't have Ctrl T enabled, you can go to preferences and enable node wrangler. Now switch that to switch point to vector and connect object to vector. You see, if I'm moving this, nothing's really happening because we really need an object to handle the material settings. So I'll add an empty and in that object settings, I'll connect empty here. Now you can use this empty to move around, scale or adjust the texture the way you like. So I'll just uh, adjust the exclusion of this path. Now I'll adjust the texture by scaling this. All right, that looks good. Now I'll add um, a cylinder now. Change the vertices, change the depth of it. Rotate this over x axis for 90 degree just the depth again and probably change its radius as well a bit so these settings are up to you once you're happy with the settings you can then edit the cylinder itself so i'll do tab add loops and scale them over y axis so they are right at the sides of this strip that we have. You can select Alt Faces, so you can select all the faces and scale them down. Right, if you switch over to wireframe mode and scale that over Y axis, you can stretch these up and down at the same time. So they are almost as flat as the sides of the the tape. Now I'll select these two faces, E and S, to extrude and scale these faces down. And I'll scale them up so they are almost as flat as the sides of this tape roll. And now we can get rid of them by pressing delete. So the faces are gone. Now we can select these edge loops by alt clicking the L loop and the second edge loop by shift alt click and bridge these edge loops together. So that's your tape complete. Now you can add a modifier searching bevel to 
give a nice rounded bevel to the edges of this tape. Increase the segments and reduce the amount by holding shift so it's very minimal. Shade auto smooth so it looks smoother now. So that's one part complete. Now we'll just uh, make uh, the tape that's going to be inside this roll. So we'll use pretty much the same approach as before. Just add a cylinder, rotate it, adjust the depth, radius. That's up to your liking. And I'll use almost all the techniques that we worked on before to create the inner part of this tape. Actually hide the outer part of the tape so we can see inside. Select the two faces, extrude E and S for scaling down. So we'll scale that part. Delete these faces and we'll use the same bridge edge tool. Selecting the edges first, then go to edge, bridge edge loop. If you go on right click, you'll see this add to quick favorites option, which is looking like remove at the moment because I've already added it. That allows you to click on Q on your keyboard and add a shortcut and use that as and when needed. Add the bevel modifier. So both these parts are complete now. We'll just rename them. Parent the inner part to the outer part. So they are one. Turn on the material preview now. We need to material um, the inner tape as well. So we'll make a new material and we can use uh, the same material that we had before by copying that image right here and connect the color to the base color. So that's looking good. Let's open up another view and switch to shader editor. This is where we will select all the faces and unwrap by pressing U. And now we can rotate this. It's just like rotating any other object within Blender, scaling them down at a certain axis and adjusting the texture. I'm using S, Y, S, X to scale my faces on X and Y axis. Until unless uh, they both are aligned with the, the tape roll itself, which is at the bottom. It's a very useful technique for you to handle textures quickly and if you can just play with it for a while you'll be familiar with it. Very straightforward. So I'm just adjusting the repeat cycle so press ctrl T and now you can just mirror on X axis so the tape on the holder is uh, reflected to the tape that's on the plane. And now since that's done, I'll just scale this so there's no weird overlapping happening. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, now you have the camera already. You can get rid of it, make your own camera and select that, set, adjust your angle and then press Control alt 0 on your numpad to make that angle set as a camera. And you can also press Shift tilde to move around with your mouse. Shift tilde allows you to move WASD keys just like in any game and adjust your camera, which is very flexible. And so I'm happy with the angle. You can press enter and leave it. Okay, now it's about time that we should be animating these. So before that, I'll just quickly adjust the, the tape's position. It's right above the plane. Okay. switch that view to top view and adjust my tape to the start switch over to timeline I'll adjust my number of keyframes to 150 that's enough for me now and select tape holder and press I to make those keyframes on location and rotation go to the end frame once again change the rotation to 360 once again press I on both location and rotation to lock those keys 
And there you go. You've got those two keyframes right there. I can reduce the keyframes and move the keyframe back if I want the animation to be slightly quicker. Now I'm going to go over to the strip setting, that is the path curve, and see this start and end mapping, which is at end. I'll place a keyframe right here, go to the end, move the end time further, and then place another keyframe right here. It's as simple as that. So you can press T to open up this value, press A to select all keyframes and select linear. So there is no easing happening between two keyframes. You can adjust those keyframes, maybe add another keyframe right here. So it's just under the table. Okay, we can add a simple plane that's going to be the base of this scene you can change the shader to cycles and switch gpu reduce the number of samples in the viewport to 50 and render to something like 100 or 150 for your final rendering add a material to the plane let's keep it slightly off white Similarly, I'll add a material to this tape rule. Slightly metallic, so it can look it looks like plastic. A bit of adjustment here and there. It's like render region, so I can only see the rendered area, and nothing outside what camera sees. So. Now you can see the animation looks good. Let's turn off this light and use HDRI. Go to environment texture and load up an HDRI. You can get it from Polyheaven or HDRI Heaven. And now the light looks more realistic. There's no need to rework any of these. And just selecting the hierarchy and MT, you can shift D to copy these and move them over in the Y axis. So you need both the MT and strip to come together. Because if you remember, MT is the one that's controlling the texture. So we would need that. And we need to change that MT because... But before that, we'll add a new material. Drag and drop the new material right here. Just drop it over the yellow line so that's connected and switch over the vector. You can just uh, align these. Now, now to adjust that texture, what we will need to do is... Select our key and duplicate that over here, the Y axis. So just that, so it's right on top of it. Now since this tape right here, we need to adjust the width of it slightly more. Let's go to the MT. It's not really working at the moment because we need to relink the new MT to this material. So let's just select that and uh, click on MT1. That's our new MT that we duplicated and we'll scale that up. Now it's uh, happening just that all right switch over to the roll duplicate that and uh, I'll use the same uh, JPEG drop it on the yellow line and connect it together so we move it here now you can see that we've got our texture on top of it and we'll adjust the width of this tape roll hitting tab and selecting the top edges first Move them over on the Y axis and then the bottom faces, edges in fact. Similarly, I'll do the same thing for the cylinder that's inside, the inner part of the tape. Once we're happy with that, we got everything here. But as you can see that we've got snapping problem. The, the tape roll that we duplicated goes back to its original position because the keyframes are there. So, you can either delete these keyframes and place new keyframes right here, or there is a simple way to do that. If you go here into Delta Transforms, here you can keep the same keyframes and just add a delta to it. So, holding Shift, I can slowly move this down on Y axis, and we've got a delta. Keeping the same keyframes, we can use those keyframes. There we go. 
we can extend our timeline and maybe move these keyframes slightly further apart so there is a bit of an offset between the two rolls. I think that setting looks a bit better now. All right, now you can save this. I can select uh, your image or video format and uh, for the quality you can go to encoding and probably select possibly lossless, perceptually lossless, yeah. And uh, then you can open up persistent data right here and you can even change the contrasts if you like. These are just different settings you can play around with. Okay, I'll just leave it to none. And then, um, seeing everything's done here, so you can just go to render and animation, and then we'll start rendering your video. So here's everything that we were able to make today. I hope they've learned something new today, and if you want to suggest something, feel free to drop down your comments and suggestions in the comment uh, part down there. And if there are anything more that you have questions or queries, drop them down and feel free to join my Patreon. I'll be happy to help you guys out. Right? I look forward to seeing you again in the next tutorial. Till again, Forest Tech, signing out.